So I came across this really gorgeous photograph of the Earth and uh, the moon. And in this photograph, we're looking at a new moon from the perspective of people on the Earth. And this means that the moon will appear completely black. You won't even be able to see it. And the sun is behind the moon. But from the perspective of this photograph, the moon is in front of the viewer of the photograph and the sun is behind the viewer or the camera. And you'll see that what we call the far side of the moon is brightly lit up and uh, this side of the earth is brightly lit up. And I think that's depicting North America. I can't totally be sure. I think uh, I'm looking at like California, Baja California. Anyway, the reason I'm making this video is because this picture sparked quite a bit of a stir amongst the idiots that are among us. And I wanted to address some of these idiots and explain some of these things for people who may not be an idiot, but just might not understand what this all means. So the first question we got was, where are all the stars? Well, here's a quick snippet I took with my phone to explain why it's difficult to see stars in images like these. You're probably wondering what the hell you're looking at. Well, this is a key light that I use when I'm streaming. It's very big and it's very bright. And this is the edge of it in my room. And you'll see that my room looks pitch black. But actually, when you come back, you see that the room is completely lit up. But when you're next to a very bright light source, everything goes dark. The reason this happens is because cameras cannot see everything. There's a, there's a dynamic range that they have to operate in. And when you have a very bright light source, the camera tries to expose the very bright light source so that you can see it. But when you go away from that light source, everything comes back into view. This is what happens with pictures of the Earth. The Earth acts as a light source because it's reflecting the light from the sun. This means that when you photograph it with a camera, it's very difficult to see the things that are around. But when you step away from that light source, everything comes back into view. And I'm not changing the light. I'm obviously recording this with my phone. And you can see this is my, this is my other hand. And you see how the camera adjusts when you come away from the light? Exposure. But what's more is if you actually look at this photograph, you can see stars on the edges of the photograph, but I'll prove that they're there. Let's open up Photoshop. Okay, so we have Photoshop open here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to import that image directly into Photoshop. So let's toss it in here. So this is the image, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to adjust the exposure and watch what happens to the image. Ah, oh, there's the stars. Very cool, right? So this proves that it's simply an exposure issue. When you have a very bright image and you overexpose it, you'll then be able to see the stars that are definitely in the image data. So you can do this yourself. This is not something I just made up. You can toss this image into Photoshop and just overexpose the hell out of it. And then you'll see that there are stars there. The problem is the earth is too bright. So now that that's out of the way, let's answer another one. The earth is lit up like a Christmas tree from the sun. Why isn't the moon? And you might be thinking, that's a really stupid thing to ask because quite clearly we can see the moon and in order to see something, there has to be light on that thing. That's just how sight and light works. But let's go a little bit deeper into this. You see, the problem this person is having is they don't understand Rayleigh scattering. Put simply, Rayleigh scattering is the scattering of light. Now, the light that comes from the sun is white. I know people like to think that it's yellow or orange or any you know color on that spectrum, maybe even red sometimes. The problem is that we have an atmosphere and that atmosphere has particles in it and those particles scatter light. And what you have to understand about light is that light is a form of radiation. So it is a wavelength and that wavelength is affected by the particles that might be in the atmosphere. Now, during the day, those particles scatter blue light. 
and that's why our sky appears blue. But when the sun is setting from wherever, wherever you are on the earth, the perspective you are on the earth, what happens is that light has to travel through much more of the atmosphere. And that's what gives you that golden or sometimes pink or even red sky that you see in the atmosphere. It's simply light going through layers of atmosphere. So now let's go back to this image. With everything that I just explained to you, can you now understand why the moon appears like this instead of this in the original photograph? Yes, that's right, because there is no atmosphere in space. So you're not seeing the scattering of light and you're seeing a true image of the moon. When you're on Earth, you're looking at the moon again through an atmosphere. This is why sometimes when you look at the moon during the daytime, the moon will appear bluish because you're looking at it through an atmosphere. The same applies when the sun is gone. The atmosphere doesn't just disappear. It's still there. So you're still seeing the scattering of light. And sometimes that makes the moon appear yellowish or gold or even very bright white. And let's end this one on an amusing note. How come they can show us this, but I've never seen a photo of the American flag on the moon? So, the flag that the Apollo astronauts planted on the moon is roughly the same size as a person. Now, here's an image of my hometown's airport, LAX, from a plane. Do you notice anything about this photograph? Yeah, the fact that you can't see people. You know why? Because people are extremely small in comparison to the enormity of the Earth. The same applies to that flag that's on the moon. It's very tiny. It'll be extremely difficult to get a photograph or even take a telescope and try to find it. It's very small. Just think about the perspective of the person on this plane in comparison to the Earth they're looking at. This plane isn't even that high. It's like 14,000 feet in the sky at this point. It's, it's extremely low, but it's still incredibly difficult to make out anything on the ground. This is why it'll be extremely difficult to photograph a flag on the moon or even take a telescope and try to bring it into view. It's extremely tiny and you would have to be extremely close to be able to see it. So anyway, I uh, just want to make this quick video because I found it amusing and uh, these people are crazy. Yeah, they're they're um, insane and uh, they think everything is <laughs> is fake. And I'm here to reassure you that no, this is a real image with real data in it. And uh, there's no conspiracy here. So, uh, yeah, no, just enjoy the beauty of the cosmos, everybody. This has been your friendly neighborhood Birdman, and uh, I'm checking out. See you in the next one.